from declaring things in your CSS that you don't even need to have there, to an over-reliance on band-aid solutions that can cause more problems than they help fix. I see beginners making the same mistakes over and over again, so in this video we're going to look at those mistakes and better ways to approach things. Hi there my front end friends, thank you so much for coming to join me for yet another video. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall in love with CSS and if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today we're going to be doing that by addressing mistakes that I see a lot of beginners making and one of those mistakes is declaring things that they don't even need. And it, I'll be honest, it's not even beginners that I see make this mistake, I see this just commonly all over the place. So as an example, let's jump into the code right here. Uh, and we'll start with just with the HTML. We're just looking at this header that I have here where I have a class of article header. So in my CSS, I've selected that and I've put some styles on here. And one of the things that I see declared all the time is a width 100%. <laughs> and the width 100% most of the time isn't even doing anything. Uh, it's, just, it's this like automatic thing where people go, I wanna make it full size. So they throw a width 100% on there. But most elements, like our header, a paragraph, an article, a div, a main, all of these things are block elements. They're already taking up all the space that's available to them anyway. So declaring that on there doesn't really do anything. And actually, it can cause some problems if you also have margins that are coming on there as well. So like really what you probably want here is auto, but auto is the default. So we don't even really need that. And you can just not declare it at all. And I also see this same thing come up with people declaring heights on things of either declaring a height auto, uh, which always, you know, that's the default behavior. So unless you're overwriting a previous thing and you need to change it back to the default, maybe you want to do that. Uh, but I also see things like fit content come in here. And if you've never seen fit content, uh, it, it's an interesting property. I'm not going to deep dive it now because I have talked about it in a previous video, but basically it means fit the content that is inside of it. So if we're going to add more stuff here, like say in the header, we add a paragraph with some lorem text and I'll just do uh, a short paragraph. My header got taller and it's fitting the content that's in there. But when it comes to height, that's basically the default anyway, because if I put that to auto, it looks exactly the same, or you know that means I can just remove it and it looks exactly the same because that wasn't changing what the behavior was. So my first thing that I'm gonna say is don't declare things unless you actually know that you need them. So do it, hit save, refresh your page. Uh, and actually, <laughs> I always get asked this, how do I auto refresh the page? I'm not using it right now, but if you're very new, the easiest thing to use in, if you're using VS Code is an extension called Live Server. It gives me a little button down here I can click and as soon as I save an HTML, CSS or JavaScript file, it will refresh the page automatically without you manually having to do it. But if you're not using VS Code and you're using a different text editor, you can probably find a similar extension unless it's something like Notepad++. In that case, I'd actually recommend that you switch over to something a little bit more robust than Notepad++. Uh, it's fine, but there's better solutions these days. But yeah, circling back, make a change and make sure that change is doing something. Don't put, okay, I know I need it to be with 100%, so I'm going to put that there. Put your stuff in, see what it looks like, and then if you need to declare something to change what the defaults are, then add that in. But if everything's falling into place and you don't have to do anything, don't write CSS just for the heck of it. Because sometimes like that with 100%, it can have unintended consequences if you have to add margins or do other things to it. So you're actually better off not declaring that unless you really need to have it. And sometimes you do every now and then you go, actually, this, this would be perfect for that. I need to change what this behavior is. That's fine. But declare things only when you need them, not just randomly putting them in, hoping for the best. Now, another thing that I see happen, and I don't know how this actually came about, but it's an over-reliance on Flexbox. And I think it's partially because when we early on learn about doing layouts and stuff, we learn about Flexbox. It's one of the early things to actually create a layout. So here I have this section, let's just go find it, or a div here of cards. And then in there I have three individual cards. So when I do my display flex on that, it's giving me three different columns because that's the three children that are inside of there. So I'm not entirely sure how this happens, but I see it where people declare flex everywhere. And it just becomes like this de facto, and it's a little bit like I just said of putting a width 100%. For some people doing a display flex just becomes this automatic. And I really would discourage doing that. Uh, for some use cases where I've actually seen it as these cards, I mean, they're not, they're not beautiful by any means. 
Uh, but one place I actually see them come up is people doing a display flex on here and then it goes to column. So then they have to do their flex direction of column on here to fix everything and basically go back to what they had in the first place and not using any other flex stuff in here. If you need this card to be a flex item for whatever reason, by all means, turn it into one. But if I just need to keep the same flow of content going, there's, there's no reason to do this at all. And I see this all the time. People are just declaring display flex all over the place thinking, well, I might need it. Uh, and then it just causes more problems and they run into issues. And usually the solution is remove your display flex from there and you're not gonna have the issue that you're running into. And another, just to show you like extreme versions of this, I have seen this uh, done. <laughs> Uh, which obviously causes lots and lots and lots of issues and then you have to either that or even like on the body and then doing it the display flex now there can be use cases for that uh, but they're usually far and few between and then the flex direction once again of column and then never doing anything with that and it's not actually serving any purpose so it's sort of I guess one and two are very similar but this display flex is this like epidemic I've seen where some people that just feel like they need to put it everywhere, please don't do that. Use it when you need it and it can be very useful, but don't get locked in and feel like you have to use it for everything. And even there's grid out there too. And for some of the things I see people using Flexbox for, grid might be a better solution. Uh, this video is not about that though. I'm not gonna worry too much. If you'd like to know more about choosing between Flexbox and grid, I'll link to another video in the description though. And continuing from there, and another mistake that people make that I see a lot is an over-reliance on like hard-coded numbers. And this one I totally understand. I know how it happens, I get, and it really takes a mental shift to break away from doing this. But if we look at these columns that I set up here, you can see they're actually a little bit, like this one's the smallest, so this one's kind of medium, and this one is a little bit wider. And that's just because of how uh, Display Flex works when we do that on the parent. So if we come back to here and we take a look in the HTML, I have these, you know, these three cards are the children, and so each one is turning into a column, but because of the content and other stuff and the way Flexbox works, they're all coming out to be different sizes. So what we can do to fix something like that is we could go on each one of the cards that's inside there. And what I see people do is something like a flex basis of 33.333%. I'll just do 33% because if not, I might break some stuff and even that might cause an issue. No, it looks okay. Uh, and, and that works because they know that my cards and I have three cards here. So it's setting it up and each one is 33%. So they're all taking up the right amount of space. So that's perfect and it's sort of working the issue with doing something like this is later on in your site, you might have somewhere that has the exact same setup. So I'm, I'm gonna just be lazy and copy and paste this uh, a, a little bit lower down uh, in my site uh, to reuse the same example. But this same one maybe only has two columns. And then, well, I can't use my cards and this is like becomes cards two, right? And then I have those ones that are inside. So then I have to have a we're going to come back to this idea in a second too, but the cards too will also be a display flex and I'll have a gap of two rem on that. But then I guess, well, this works, but then I need to do a cards two dot card and that one can have a flex basis of 50%, right? Because now we have two columns. So, okay, that's working. I have my three columns here. I have my two columns. But when I say this over-reliance on these like fixed values are things like this, where I need to code in all of, I need something for 33%, something for 50, something for 20%, something for 25%. You start running into all these different situations. And part of this is just the way we think. And you get to here, I need two columns, I need 50%. I need three columns, I need 33%. I need four, et cetera, et cetera. So 100%, I understand how, how we get into that thinking. And the other thing with that is, if you go to old enough tutorials, this is how the web used to work. When we had float-based layouts, which don't worry about if you don't know what they are, it's not the way we should make layouts, but this is how we had to do things back then. It was the only way to really get things to work. And I think a lot of that thinking stuck around uh, and found its way into future readings and tutorials and other stuff like that. Two, those two forces combined lead to this being a very common pattern, but we could make this a lot easier where I could say, cards and then my flex basis um this is going to be a little weird but we're going to do 100 percent on them and it still works and then over here it still works <laughs> uh, and that's just because these are flex items 
they're able to shrink. So even though I'm saying they should be 100%, and this is a little bit like the width 100% that we want to avoid, unless you need it. And this is one of those cases where doing this actually fixes the problem. So what we're really doing is telling them all to be the same size. And then because there's a flex shrink of one on these as a default behavior, they're shrinking and they're all, they're all fitting and becoming the same thing. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of a weird thing if you're not used to flex and going, well, 100% makes them equal. And there's other approaches. You'll see another very similar one of just doing a flex one, which gives you the exact same result, even though it takes a little bit of a different way to get there. But same, the same principle is at play where we're making them all the same size. And then it doesn't matter if you have two columns, three columns, five columns, 10 columns, and then you don't need this cards two anymore. You can just have your regular cards anywhere you want. And maybe cards isn't even the best class name anymore, <laughs> which gets to my next part of things like cards two, <laughs> um, where these, class naming becomes a little bit of an issue and leads to a lot worse maintenance where you get things like this of cards one cards two cards three that are often doing the same thing or i'll even see here where let's just go up to where we have the three and we'll make this a little bit bigger uh, i'll see something like this where it's card one card two and card three something like that and then you need the same css on all three of those and this is super common you have like a or even worse than cards sometimes, like I'll see P class equals P1, and then class equals P2, whoops, P2. And they're just like naming everything they're doing, which if you need to select it, that's fine. But I would suggest more descriptive names and more reusable names. A big purpose of having classes is that we can use the same class over and over again. So having card one, card two, card three, unless all three cards need to be different from one another, it's kind of useless. And one time maybe you'd want to do something like this is you have your card, 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 and then you have your one, your two, your three, and we're going to fix this in a second as well. But this approach, at least the cards are all working, they're all the same. And then if I need to, I can do my card two has a background of red and it has the different background or whatever. But I'd even suggest maybe a different name here. Instead of card two, you can have your BG accent and make it something that could be reused instead of being something that's locked into this one use case that you can never use again. Even if you're only using it one time on your page right now, something like this is more useful because then I could take this and do it's a card with a BG accent. We don't need this one here. We don't need this one here. But then I could come and I could say, you know what, this area at the top, my header, it has my article header, but I also want that to have my BG accent on there. So I can give that the red background. And then, you know what, maybe this, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but this paragraph could also have a BG accent. And so saving that, and then we get into a much better situation. And the best way to be able to think of this way and to be able to go that way is first, if you're doing something that's like a one-off style, think about it. Can this be reused elsewhere? Look at the rest of the design that you're building and always try and think a little bit bigger picture than being super hyper-focused on that one thing you're doing, especially when it comes to your class names. Is this something that could be reused in different places? And again, don't do card one, card two, card three. Just make a generic card unless each one is wildly different from each other one. So yeah, thinking bigger picture and just coming up with class names that can be reused and trying not to get like too locked into very specific things of setting. And even with the paragraph example I gave before, I've seen things where it's like paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and then setting the same font size on all three of them. Just set your paragraph font size or your body font size and rely on inheritance or little things like that that can make uh, life a little bit easier. The less CSS we write, the less maintenance there is, usually the better everything works. And I guess that last point comes down, I'm gonna take off this BG accent because it's a little hard on the eyes. Um, comes down to the last thing I wanna talk about or the last mistake, which is uh, relying a little bit on like Band-Aid solutions that cause more problems. And the, the one Band-Aid solution I see used most often is using position absolute. Position absolute has its purposes, but it should be a last resort rather than the first thing that you go to because positioning, especially with absolute, has some side effects to it. So as one example, I wanna select these images that are inside my card. So we can do that with just, it's the image inside my card, or we can do that with a direct child selector. So an image that's the direct child of my card. So if I select those, we can come and look at these cards. I have my 
card, and then I have my image that's directly inside of it. So I'm selecting that. We could also give each image a class and select it through that, whichever one uh, works, but we'll just do it this way for now. And say I need the image to be outside of the padding or I need to move it around a little bit. I see so many people do something like this where they'll put a position absolute on there and then say a top of negative 0.5 rem and then a left of negative 0.5 rem, just as an example. And it pulls it out of the flow a little bit. It gives it this little unique look, I guess. Uh, the problem is where'd my titles go? Well, they're underneath the image now because when we do something like that, we're pulling the image out of the flow and nothing really sees it. So then I have to go onto my card uh, H2. So let's do it like that. And then I'm going to do a margin top of like 10 RAM, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, I have to sort of guess at the value that's here and then I can eventually get it. And I go, OK, there we go. Everything's working, except that's not going to work down here because my images are bigger. And it also wouldn't work if we came back up to these other ones and I had a card or an image that had a different aspect ratio on it. So here I have one ready, uh, image four, and then we get a tall image like that. And it's completely breaking everything. So when we're running into situations like this, position absolute makes things not really reusable. Now there are times I would use position absolute for stuff and I'll mention it a little bit uh, in a second, but for something like this, I think there's other solutions. And I always go, how can, how can I do this? And try to find ways that you can do it without position absolute. And if you have no other choice, then bring in position absolute. I mean, in this case, I could actually do this with position relative probably. Um, I'd have to change some of these values, but then we could get rid of that giant margin underneath and we could get things to work. This would probably become a negative that way. Uh, and then we sort of get that same effect. And the advantage with position relative is it doesn't pull things out of the flow. So something like that would definitely work. Or my go-to if I need to move things around within sort of where they are, but I need to sort of adjust the positioning a little bit, would be instead of using positioning at all, would just be to do a transform. And then I can do a translate negative 1.5 rem, negative 1.5 rem. And I realize here, let's just put this on another line so we can see it all. And so having something like that, if I save, it looks exactly the same as we had when I used the position. It just moves everything over a little bit. Now this can lead to going, okay, well now I have a space that's a little bit too big. So just to show you that it did work, let's just make it a little bit more exaggerated and make it two, so you can see it shoved over a little bit extra. And the disadvantage, I guess, with either the position one or the transform is it, it saves the space that these things were originally in, but it moves it. So the rest of the site doesn't really see where it's moved to. So it leaves the original space as is, which is better than position absolute where it pulls it out of the flow and then all the content goes underneath it. So one solution here, and this is something else that maybe is a mistake and people might not like me looking at, but is using a negative margin on the title to pull it back up into the space. Negative margins, another one, probably a good thing to try and avoid unless you have a specific use case where go here, I need to suck it up and fill in that empty space. And in this case, it works actually pretty well. And the advantage with this is it, it's just going up negative one based on where it originally was. And that means that if I did change the image or I have different sized images, it's gonna work regardless of what's happening there. So don't use negative margins if you can avoid it, but every now and then they can be actually a good thing to use. And I see this, this is one of those things like negative margins are a hack, you should never use them. Use them with care, know why you're using them. And that sort of wraps up everything that I'm talking about is don't blindly throw things at it. Circles back to the beginning when I said, always have a purpose for what you're doing. So if there's a good reason that you're using it and maybe the transform translate because it leaves that empty space is causing an issue or, you know, these images, I'm not using negative margins to move them because that could have other consequences. Whereas I feel like doing a translate and then if I need to, I could fix a few little things with small tweaks, but everything I'm doing has a purpose to it that I can explain. So like, don't just start throwing code at stuff. And if it doesn't work, piling more code on top of that and then piling more code and trying to throw as many things because then all these things that weren't working, they're not, they're sort of going to be potentially in conflict with one another or causing other problems. So try something. So first write code to achieve a specific goal. If you have something that's full width, don't add more code to it to make it full width if it already is. Uh, if you need to balance things out though, because you have uneven columns, then a flex one or a flex basis 100%. 
that's fine because it's actually accomplishing something that isn't working already. And then for things about moving stuff around, in general, transforms or position relative, if you need to, just to sort of nudge things in the right direction can be useful. I did mention, I'd say times when you should be using position absolute. Uh, I use it when you do want to pull something out of the flow. I don't want anything else. So maybe you need overlapping items. We need to pull it out of the flow to achieve what you want to achieve. So a lot of time it's little decorations that you need, maybe a quotation mark that needs to be somewhere unique or things like that. Those are the times that it can be useful, but be very careful with positioning. Try to come up with other solutions, and if nothing else is working, then maybe you can go back to that. And I did also mention earlier in the video that you know we were using Flexbox here, but Grid is a very good layout choice as well. So if you wanna know how I decide when I should be using Flexbox and when I should be using Grid, I have a video that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.